Also this evening, we are back on the case, learning more about this man, Jesse McFadden. He's accused of murdering his wife, her children, and two teens at a sleepover at his home before killing himself. News 4 was the only television station where there when the Webster family walked through the McFadden's home. Inside, Ivy's cell phone hidden in a cabinet. Three other phones also found along with laptops and drug paraphernalia. This video prompting state agents to take over the case. But there was something else inside that home. Hundreds of pages of letters and journal entries written to McFadden's second victim, the only one he was going on trial for sexting. News Force Kaylee Olivas with details. The burning question we've seen most people ask is where was Jesse McFadden's probation officer? Well, the Oklahoma State Department of Corrections tells us he didn't have one, and that's because he wasn't on probation. He was required to check in every 90 days with the Okmulgee County Sheriff's Office, but a county investigator compared those checks to playing darts. Still confused. Still a lot of answers that need to be given. Jesse McFadden was convicted of rape and sentenced to 20 years in 2003. During his time, he was put on what's called a level four, meaning he had, quote, outstanding behavior. That is until 2016, when he was caught with a cell phone authorities say he used to sext a teenage girl. The following year, he was charged with child porn, and his inmate status dropped to level one. Only five months later, he was back on good terms. But at the same time, writing that same teenager letters from jail. This exclusive video shows copies of letters and journal entries, about 200 pages worth, found in McFadden's home last week. The victim told News 4 off camera she must have been 15 or 16 when McFadden wrote these. In the letters, McFadden told her how much he loved her and wanted to make her his wife. He also mentioned the sexual acts he would perform on her, written in almost every letter, this quote. I'm doing everything to get out sooner. McFadden went on to complete 85% of his sentence, which is required by the state. And after 17 years and with his good credits, he was released despite still facing a child porn charge. McFadden wasn't on probation. He did have to check in with the Okmulgee Sheriff's Office every three months. The DOC claims he was compliant with this, but a sheriff's investigator has painted a different picture. So who is supposed to be checking? on the sexual offender. It's public record. It's everywhere. So nobody's supposed to come and do checks? We do compliance checks, but it's like, so it's dark. See which one we're going to do, because that's all we have the resources to do. Your video is undeniable. It's undeniable that you blew it. News 4 reached out to the Okmulgee County Sheriff's Office for a detailed record of McFadden's compliance checks, but we haven't heard back. All the while, a pending child porn charge that took three years for a trial date to be set. The story from the district attorney's office is, is that one, they got caught up into, um, they had a prosecutor break an ankle that delayed the trial. Then the pandemic happened. Cameron Spradling, the attorney for Ivy Webster's family, also claims a defense attorney in McFadden's case died from COVID. And finally, on the day the trial is supposed to start, McFadden killed six people, then himself. And according to NBC News, sometime before the killings, McFadden sent these social media messages to his child pornography victim. He tells her, quote, I told you I wouldn't go back. This is all on you for continuing this. A delay in justice, Ivy's family says, led to innocent lives being lost. In Henrietta, Kaylee Olivas, Oklahoma's News 4. Jesse McFadden was also required to let the State Department of Human Services know he would be living with his three stepchildren. We've reached out to DHS to confirm if he did, but they say they are unable to release that information.